Hello everyone. Uh, today we'll be talking on how to select a journal for your research publication. So as an academic, it's always a dream of us to publish our research work in a journal, pay, a journal right? So uh, if you go with the, uh, so in the research culture, so we usually hear the words called journal and conference. In a conference, you send the paper and get the reviews back, whether it is rejected or accepted, and then dusted. If it is accepted, you present it in the conference and it will be published. In a journal, it's not that uh, easy, right? So these are pretty tough sometimes. So we don't know the reviewers as well as in the conference also. So we get back the reviews and it can go in multiple rounds of reviews. I think the maximum is three. If you can't uh, do the corrections, then your paper will be rejected, right? So what makes a paper different from a journal and conference is from my perspective is the work, uh, the depth of your work, which is presented and your marketing. Right. So you will see if your if your research is highly interesting, it's something groundbreaking, a turning point of your research field, then you have a higher chance to get it published in a journal. Right. And also there are cases like even if your uh, outcome is not that significant, sometimes people manage to get it published in a journal based on their marketing. So they market what they have done properly, proper way, right? But it's not, it's not always true. So in a journal, your work has to be outstanding and interesting, right? So one way to search it here is, uh, so you go to S-E-I-M-A-G-O or Scopus, right? So this I may go or Scopus, you can just simply type it on Google. So if you don't see this interface, so once you go to this uh, Scopus page, there will be something called sources. So you can either search it from titles or subject areas or the ISSN number, whatever you want. And here also. So if you go to journal rankings, there will be plenty of uh, journals which are ranked based on the SJR, their journal ranking, right? So if I want uh, my subject area, I will set as engineering and subject category is uh, civil. And I would say, so these are the research uh, sorted from Simago, right? So usually Scopus is updated annually and this page also being updated by Scopus. But for some reasons, we still use it. I will show you why. So let's say you need, uh, so, H index and I will get to these uh, what are these H index and so this is just an intro introduction so uh, to see the rankings of these journals right and if you go to home page so let's say you are your work is something related to concrete right so if you know the journal name type it correctly otherwise it will not give anything so if you uh, if you are not sure about the name, but if you know the word should be there, so you can type it, type that word, let's say concrete. So there will be the list of journals where the con in, in which the concrete is included in their name, right? Or else any keyword, right? So you will see these are, these are 
ranked based on the H index. And if you go to these uh, first journal, so if I click it, so you will be directed to this page. So scope and the area of this uh, journal is engineering and material science. It's a broad scope. So I think that will be discussed here. Yeah. In the home page, if you want to go to the general home page, you can click this. And uh, yeah, the scope is here. You can read it. So be careful on the scope of the journal because if it is not something, if your work is not related to the scope of journal, I would uh, I would encourage you not to submit in that channel because the edited editors will simply reject it, right? So they do care about the work submitted and they are, if they adhere to their scope of the journal, right? So this journal has been Q1 journal uh, from 19, I mean, 2000. So, so, okay, what are these Q1 and Q2 journals? So you will see it's Q2 here. So Q1 are the journals. Uh, Q1, actually Q1 are the top 25%, top 25% journals in the world, right? Q2 means 25 to 50. Q3 means 50 to 75. And Q4 is 75 to 100. Right. So it's always as an academic, uh, their dream is to publish their work. If it is, uh, if it is good, they go for Q1. Right. So this is a Q1 journal. So if you go to journal's homepage, so each index is 262. So these are, uh, so if I go to the homepage, so you will see the home page. So the impact factor is 11.95. The impact of the journal, right? Site score, all these things are there. So, uh, so from there you can read the full scope, right? Whether your research belongs here, right? And uh, you general in general terms, if uh, I don't know. This is my point of view. Usually, uh, I see a journal good if the impact factor is uh, greater than maybe three or four, right? Maybe if it is larger than three or four, it's definitely a good and competitive journal, right? And uh, with that being said, so we'll go and see. Uh, what is H index? Okay, so H index uh, is a relationship like this. So you will see, so I have drawn these uh, Y equals X line from publication and citations. Let's say if a person uh, publishes work, first journal, let's say, uh, with time, let's say he gets one citation, right? So his H index will become then one, right? And let's say he goes with the second publication. He published another paper. And uh, with time, with some time, if the citation will be, let's, let's assume one, and this one will be, let's assume three. Right. And the third publication also goes with, let's say, zero citations. And fourth, let's say two by the time, let's say this has four. And this has, let's say this is still one. And this is also one. Right. So still his H index is one. How can I say that? H index is, right, uh, it's a combination of 
n in n times n. So that means you have to have n number of publications, at least n number of publications with at least n number of citations, right? For example, in order to be your h index is one, you have to have one publication with one citation, right? You have to have one publication with one citation. I think his H index is now going to two. I will uh, teach you how. So first thing is you have to sort these things in the order. I would go with uh, like this. Sort it from the largest to small. Right, you will see now he has at least two citations for each for two number of documents. So that means his H index is now two. So if you if your H index is three, so that means you have at least three publications in which each has three number of citations, right? So let's say this becomes three and this becomes three. So now his H index is, so you can grab this H index from this line, right? So you have to sort it from the largest to small of citations. I did a mistake, I kept two there. That's why I told H index is one at, uh, the moment of his fourth publication, right? So let's say he has several publications, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this goes, let's say, 12, six, six, and four, four, one, 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 zero, zero, right? So I have, I have this in the largest to smallest order. So you will see his search index is now four because he has at least four publications with four citations. Actually, he has five, but the minimum criteria is n into n. You will see. So in order to become his H index is five, he need to have he needs to have five publications with five citations, but he he doesn't have that, right? So in order to be his H index 5, this should be 5, and this also should be 5. Now his H index is 5. So even this goes 5, doesn't matter, right? Nothing happened. So in order to be his H index 6, he needs to have at least 6, at least 6 documents, at least 6 publications which have more than or six citations right let's say this becomes six nothing happens now he has five documents with six citations nothing happens the moment you got six for this so you have index will be six so similarly journals also have that so you saw that h index was 262. So that means that journal has 262 papers which got 262 citations. There may be, I mean, listen it carefully, that journal has at least 262 papers which got 262 citations. There may be more than more papers than 262 but the problem is in order to each it to be 263 so the journal should has should have 263 papers with at least 263 citations in each right so it is n into n right so hope you understand that so that is also one way of Checking journal's quality. So if you go to this, and it's a good journal, 
and from Saimago, you can easily search whether journal is Q1 or Q2 because it's here. Scopus, uh, yeah, that is also easy, but Scopus gives you a, a good detailing on your research work. So if you go with the subject area, right, or else you can just type the uh, title here. It's cement and concrete. Sorry. Research. So once you click that, it will appear here. And another journal is there. So I would just type random journal. So you can either you can first quartile means Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. Here the percentile is a bit different. So this here the percentile Q1 is chosen from 75 to 100. Q2 is 50 to 75. The percentile is a bit confusing with the exactly opposite of what I told earlier in Cymeco, right? I mean, the journal rank, right? First quarter. So this is 99 percentile. So that means it is in first 25 journals. It's obviously Q1. And actually it is within the first 1% uh, one, 1 of the journals of the world, right? From here, if you are choosing it from the percentiles, so Q1 is chosen above 75. And Q2 is above 50 and below 75 right and here we have citations and documents uh, published and publisher right and you have it here right so you can also get from publisher or if you have specific publisher and also if you want to go with subject area you can go with subject area and uh, I would go with engineering. If you go with computer science, AI, and apply. So all these filters will be there, right? So you can just cancel it because there are no AI and concrete related things. So now it's there. So this is your topmost work. So you will see in the computer science field, it's a bit different. Sometimes there are good conferences which are better than um, even most of the journals. Especially these IEEE conferences are very high index conferences, right? So the moment you uh, say index conference or index journal, so we usually mean by Scopus index, right? So you will see top 2%. This is top 2%. So it's a Q1. So Q1 means actually top 25% of the journals, but from the percentile, it is from 75 to 100, right? So don't confuse with that term, right? So this is Q1, right? And uh, yeah. That is how you select a journal usually. So let's go with your topic. Let's say if I have a research like this, let me show you. So if you if you have a specific journal, always go for that. Um, for example, 
So if you choose this journal, so always there will be something called guide for authors, right? So go for that and there will be some guides, uh, guidance given to you how to prepare your manuscript and all the things. So you better read it, but it is not that must to stick it to that 100%, right? There are exceptions. And uh, in the journals, there are two types of uh, payments, which are called a subscription and open access. For open access journals, you have to pay the article publishing cost. You have to pay it. For subscription, it is free. That means your journal paper, so for your article or your manuscript uh, can be published without any cost right so in the journals which has both these options you can choose whether you go for open access or subscription so you might see if you go for subscription you don't have to pay anything yeah that's true the, but that that paper once it's published you can't share it until for some period they uh, they told you to do so let's say if you submit and if your article gets accepted as a subscription article so the journal will tell you you can't publicly share this article within next two or next one year after that you can share it right it's a general policy for open access is it's not so it's freely available right so you will see in the science direct Many of the articles are not freely available. Uh, those are the subscri subscription articles, and then the one who are the ones who are available freely, you can download. Those are open access, right? Same goes with each publisher. And even if it is open access, so publishing, so you can see most of the times you can uh, search for that cost here. And uh, open access options. You will see gold open access freely available both uh, for a wider community. So open access, usually those papers have more citations because anybody can access it easily. So these are not uh freely available right but you don't need to pay anything at all right so the cost is given here usually let me check yeah it's is it here mm, yes yeah the article publishing charges US dollars 5060, which is quite high, right? So, but based on your country, there will be a discount, right? So that discount is usually you can search. Uh, so this embargo period is the period that journal asks you to ask you not to share your article if it is subscription right so these uh, discounts and everything you can so usually there are so research for life so sometimes it appear here it's called research for lives in that uh, let me check Yeah, here's another general, general of building engineering. So usually there should be something called a open access page for full information. In there, you will see even if you go with open access, uh, there will be a discount based on your country, right? So not sure that I reached. Yeah. 
usually in that research for like uh, discounts so there are four categories right category a category b category c and category d as i remember so category even if you go with open access if your country falls within category a your entire apc is fully waived you don't need to pay anything right but if you are category b from the your discount you will obtain is 50 percent so that means in that journal us dollars five thousand and nearly five thousand so if you are in category a country you don't have to pay anything it's completely free even for open access if your country is a category b you have to pay around us dollars 2500 right it's like that so i'm not sure where i can find that i don't know Yeah, it's here, I think. Uh, open access. Just type in Google uh, Research for Life discounts. Here are the countries. Group A. And Group A countries. So here will be Group A and group B, right? And uh, sorry, there was no group C and D. So that means not eligible, right? Group A countries receive 100% uh, discount, whereas group B will receive 50%, right? It's like that. And let's go with uh, one of the papers. So I will uh, teach you in a different video how to submit to a journal, but for now, Let's focus on how to find your journal, the best match, right? So I would go with uh, two of the journal uh, publishers. I will go with Elsevier and uh, Springer. So I will just Google Elsevier Journal Finder. So it will pop up here as Spring Springer Journal Suggester, right? So let's say this is your research work done. So you, you should have your names, first author, second author, third author, and their institutional addresses and corresponding author, which corresponds to, so I mean, if you have any queries uh, during your paper and everything, so corresponding author always uh, should be contacted, right? In that case, we'll provide his email, right? First author can be corresponding author or else any author, right? So usually uh, in these journals, the person who submits the paper or the article to the journal default becomes the corresponding author unless specifically mention it in the publication stage, right? So unlike in conferences, conferences, so uh, you don't need to follow any specific formatting for a journal. Most of the journals, except for MDPI, as I know, uh, LCV and Springer and Nature, I think, they mostly require a Word document or else overly latex, anything you like, right? So, but provide a Word document, right? That is quite easy. So in that Word document, you can prepare your journal manuscript. So if it is accepted, so they will there's a publication production team who will put your manuscript into their uh, nice and short format. So you don't need to worry on any journal uh, on their, or oh, I can't find their format. 
right? That's that's not needed, right? You don't need to follow their uh, format. You just need to type a you know a document and submit it. So usually it's like this. So you have the title page here, an abstract with keywords, and you should have line numbers here because uh, when it is in the review stage, right? So reviewers can refer to your page number and line number and say, okay, this page, this line, you have this, explain it. Likewise, right? That's why we put line numbers. Sometimes the journal publication automatically puts it, but in any case, I would do that. So, and with line spacing is 2.0, right? So you have to have your nice and uh, smooth manuscript without any errors, right? And uh, all the figures and equations should be properly mentioned. Uh, usually medicine and engineering manuscripts are a bit different. Medicine, they have different uh, formatting system for even for their manuscript. So how you, you should prepare it. But engineering, not that strict, but you have to provide actually introduction, literature review, methodology, uh, research and discussion likewise, right? You have to, you have to, there should be a proper flow in your article, right? And then uh, research and discussion. And boom, done, right? References. Sometimes, uh, Please read at least if you select a journal, please at least read five latest published uh, papers in that journal and identify whether your uh, topics and content is aligned according with the journals, other published papers, acknowledgements. Sometimes there are a few clauses you have to mention here. Even if you su submit it, the journal will ask send you to back to you before reviewing, please uh, correct this and resubmit, right? Likewise, so it's better to have, uh, better to see several pages, uh, several papers and see what are the, if there are any clauses, the acknowledgement, declaration, funding, you have to, uh, if, they, if the latest papers have mentioned it, better you also mention it in the, uh, after the conclusion before the references, right? So that's with the, so I will copy this. So I need to now find a journal, suitable journal for this manuscript. So First, I would uh, copy this title and and copy the abstract also and go to Elsevier or its printed journal suggester. So you will see I have already pasted the title and pasted the ab abstract. I will paste it here also. So based on your keywords and title, right? Uh, they will suggest, so if you want here also, you can uh, subject area also, if you want, you can, yeah. So you just need to select find journals, right? Here also you can press suggest journals, right? So here are the journals that would, so this would not tell you that it is completely okay to submit with this. Please read the journal scope, right? So these are suggested based on the keywords uh, of the published papers in these journals, right? So even if you submit to one of these journals, there's always a risk that your journal work can be rejected based on your scope is not fit with these journal. So please read the journal scope here, right? That is a must, right? Journal scope is there. You have to better read it, 
right? So there will be acceptance rate. So and time to this is also important because uh, time to first decision 14 weeks, right? So that means nearly three months. Impact factor is 8.6. So that's quite good journal. Not quite, absolutely a good journal. Time for publication means after accepting the uh, your publication, sorry, your manuscript, within three weeks, they will publish it, right? They have both subscription and open access, right? So you can sort it based on the time to first decision. So you will say there will be a couple of journals. So seven weeks, four weeks, it's a bit fast journal. Uh, this is also, it's two weeks, but the acceptance rate is in exceptionally low, right? So that means either uh, many people try to submit papers here and only few get accepted or within the published so within the submitted uh, manuscript very few get accepted right so this time for a decision is also critical because let's say if a journal takes four to five months for your review right average right so if there's no evidence on the review speed so you can check always uh, the latest papers published in the journal and they are in the usually in the first page there will be the date where they submit the manuscript and the acceptance so from sub Submit, uh, submittance to acceptance, you can check the time gap, right? So there will be ex there will be a clause saying, okay, this manuscript was submitted on this, revised on this uh, date, as accepted on this date. So you can uh, judge uh, whether the review speed is good. The reason is, Let's say if your journal is, uh, if your manuscript is uh, there for seven to eight months and gets rejected, then you have, then within that seven months, there's a lot of possibility that another, another person can do your research and he submit, he or she submits that research after you and get it published in a different journal. So by the time your journal is rejected, he or she is able to pub publish his or her work in that journal. Now, when you are resubmitting your work into a different journal, there's already a published paper related to your research. So I mentioned only one person, right? If there are 45 papers, right? So the next time you publish, there will be a competition, right? So it will be really hard and competitive to publish uh, after long period and a rejection, right? So therefore the time for first decision is also important, right? So from here, you can go with uh, any journal you like and here also, and this is to say, always check their scope, and that's a must. You can go to home page, journal homepage from here, I think. Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah, there should be. Yeah, if you click this, they will go to journal homepage, I think. So even if this suggest, don't be fooled by that your work belongs here, right? So they suggest these journals based on your keywords, not on your, not on, not based on the quality of your work, right? If you do some uh, rubbish work and 
uh, search for these journals, they will search at something, but surely it will not get accepted or go past by the editor even, right? So Springer journal, so, so you have, so he, you will see impact factors are not there, but it's a quite good journal. As I remember, it's a Q3 journal. Uh, impact factors, I think, has not been updated regularly. That's, that, that may be the reason. So the first decision is average, eight days. So you will see based on, so, so this OA and S means open access and subscription, both the, both options are available and uh, yeah, this journal uh, subscription are there. I think you don't need to pay it. I haven't seen such journal. Usually it's the other way around. Journals only with open access. Uh, yeah, 54 days. So likewise, you can find journal which matches your work and go with the submission. So I will do a separate video on how to submit uh, your work. So you will need these things. So you will have to usually these documents are not always uh, compulsory so gen so your work should be there manuscript uh, should be definitely there you should pop, uh, submit it and then these things are optional sometimes but 80% to 90% times cover letter should be there and credit authorship declaration and highlights highlights are i have rarely seen but in several journals that uh, has become a mandatory option. So if I show you what are these, so the cover letter addresses uh, the journal and the chief editor. So here goes your name and your institutional address, the date, editor-in-chief, uh, journal name. So you can mention the name of your journal if it is concrete and cement composite. So put it here and here the publisher, and then you have to see who is the editor in chief or editors in chief and mention their names here, dear professor. Uh, likewise, okay, if their name is John, dear professor John, right? And the topic is a submission of a manuscript to journal. So we are submitting a manuscript entitled, title of your research, put it here and the author's name in the order of your manuscript title page and which we'd like to submit for publication in. Uh, again, the journal name should be here, right? And we believe that our findings appeal this journal and not, this is very important. We confirm this manuscript has not been published elsewhere or not under consideration of any journal. Don't ever submit a paper to two journals at once. It is not ethically correct. One one possible uh, reason is you are, I mean, let's say you submit to journal A and journal B. Journal A doesn't know that you submit you have submitted to journal B and journal B doesn't know that you have submitted to journal A. Submission is possible, but what happens if journal A sends your paper to some reviewer and journal B also sends the paper to the same reviewer. Then reviewer might, might confused. Oh, okay, this guy has published the j paper into two journals at the same time. So your work is anyway going to be rejected and you will have a bad reputation. It is not ethically or uh, it's not ethically good at all, right? You, you should never do it. If you submit it to a journal, you can withdraw it and submit to an, another journal if you want. But don't ever submit uh, your manuscript into two or three journals at the same time, right? All authors have approved the manuscript and agreed with, and then please all correspond to your name and your institution address or address, email and phone, 
and your name signature and your titles can be here uh, placed here right so the next is credit authorship so some journals ask for this credit authorship is a uh, let's say your journal has three three authors so what they did actually conceptualization so writing original manuscript likewise right it's simple document one page and the other thing is declaration so that means you don't have any financial law personal relationship uh the people there which influences this work right so we usually say that we don't have any uh conflict of interests right so we put a tick and submit it usually in the elsevier page this document can be freely downloaded or else you can even type it and put a tick and just submit it doesn't matter if you have any conflict of interest you can uh, mention it here right so these these things are usually mandatory documents but other than that there are something called uh, highlights and other things so which which gives you few uh, important points maybe four to uh, three to four sentences highlights of your research it's also one page summary right one page document right so i hope you understood the process it's so we'll go with the second video how to publish this to a journal which i will use an elsevier journal and tell to you how to submit it okay thank you very much